All right, so we're getting into chapter two, section three, learning how to use our calculators to approximate uh, values of angles and ratios and things like that. So we want to approximate the function values, the angle measures, and different applications of where these come in handy, as well as if you've ever looked at your calculator and noticed there's not a secant, cosecant, and cotangent button, uh, but we need to be able to figure out how to calculate those in a calculator, okay? so. We'll get through that here. Uh, for what we're doing, please make sure that your uh, your calculator is in degree mode. So you hit mode, go down to degrees or and then over. Well, it'll have radian or degree. Make sure you go over to degree and hit enter. So degree uh, is highlighted. Uh, so I was just kind of double check if you enter in uh, like we have here on the slide. If once you put it in degree mode, if you hit sine of 90, and hit enter and you get one the calculator is correctly in degrees mode okay so what we need to do here is approximate the value for each expression here all right so this is 49 degrees 12 minutes we have to be able to understand how to uh, either put that 49 degrees into a decimal or we have to be able to use the DMS function on our calculator all right so most of you guys you know you don't know how to put in the degree or the 12 minutes on your calculator so kind of follow along with me um, have your calculator in hand as you do this all right and I'll guide you through how we actually get it because uh, you don't know how to put in the degree piece and the uh, the 12 minutes you normally have just gone hey like sign of 49 and gotten an answer but that's not the correct answer here because we have 12 minutes okay so what you need to make sure that you do is you're gonna hit the sign button then you're going to type in the 49 and then there's an apps button above the sign don't hit apps yet see above apps it says angle so we have to hit second and apps which brings us up to the angles and you notice that number one is the degree symbol so you're going to hit enter and then you're going to type in 12 and you're going to hit second and apps again and you're going to go down to number two that has the apostrophe and you're going to hit enter close your parentheses and hit enter. You should get this, 0.75699505557, all right? So there is where you get those values from and how you plug them in. Now, if we have something that's in minutes, okay? Minutes does not show up under second app, right? We can't find the, uh, the quote piece for minutes, all right? So here's where you go get that. If you look on your calculator, above the plus sign, there's an MEM -E for memory, and then to the right of that in green is the quote. All right. So in order to add seconds, if we wanted to add seconds to this, you would have to hit alpha plus, and that would give you the quote that you need in order to add the minutes portion of this. Okay. So there's how you add degrees, how you add seconds, and how you add minutes onto uh, you know whatever value that you want to calculate here all right next now we got secant of 97.977 now since 97.977 is in decimal uh, we're ready to go we don't have to use second apps and apply an angle we just have to know how to write secant in our calculator okay secant isn't a button on our calculator but secant's related to what to cosine so we're gonna use the cosine button to help us drive secant. All right, so we're gonna take the reciprocal of this. So when we have an angle measurement, we're gonna take cosine of 97.977, and then we're gonna take the reciprocal of that answer. One divided by that answer is the reciprocal. That's how you will find secant of a specific angle. You would do the same for cosecant. You would take sine of the angle, and then do the reciprocal. And the same to get cotangent. If I'm giving you the angle, you would take cotangent of the angle and then do one divided by um, whatever that result is. So you take tangent of the angle, one divided by uh, whatever the result is. All right, so let's do this one. We're doing secant here. So we're gonna take cosine, that's its inverse function, right? So we're gonna take cosine of 97.977 um, and then we take the reciprocal of that. Okay, so in order to do that, you're going to take cosine of that number, and you're going to get negative 0.13877, 
okay? And then you're just gonna hit the X to the minus one button after that, and it should allow you to do get that answer, previous answer piece to the uh, negative one and give you the value of the angle. If that's not working for you on your calculator, after you type in cosine of 97.977, you're left with negative you know, 0.138, just like what's on the screen here. But to get to the ANS piece to the inverse, that means previous answer. On your calculator, you notice that that's in purple or blue or whatever color you want to think that is, above the negative sign. So the very bottom right hand key, all right, where the negative sign is, it says ANS above it. You're going to hit second and the negative sign, not the minus sign, the negative sign, the one at the very bottom of your calculator, and then you're gonna hit X to the negative one. It's the fourth key down on the left-hand side below the second. So now your screen should look exactly like what's on the screen on here. You hit enter and you're gonna get negative 7.2, all right, for your angle, for your secant value, okay? so. There's how we take secant of an angle using our calculator. So it works out to approximately be that, all right? So let's approximate the value of these expressions. Now this one, we gotta think a little bit about it. We have one divided by cosine, or I'm sorry, cotangent of 51.42. What's cotangent's inverse? Tangent, right? So if we rewrite this in terms of tangent, it'll really help us solve the problem here. So we're going to use the reciprocal identity and know that tangent of theta is 1 over cotangent of theta. So I should just be able to take tangent of this value, so tangent of 51.4283, and get 1.25394. That's the solution. Okay, We don't have to do anything special for cotangent there because rewriting it gave us the tangent value uh, when we did that. So what is that 1.25 represent? What does it represent in the previous one? That's the ratio. Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that 1.25 represents the ratio of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg based on the angle measurement of 51.4283 degrees. Hopefully that makes some sense for you, all right? But that's, that's really what we're doing is we're finding what that ratio is of the opposite side length to the adjacent side length, all right? Let's look at sine of negative 246 degrees. Okay, so what's that gonna give us? It's gonna give us what? Approximately negative 0 0.91354. The negative I had there a second ago, I had to switch out. The negative is, is incorrect. It was, it, it's sine of negative 246, but the answer is a positive ratio because Negative 246 ends up in the second quadrant, remember? So uh, all students take calculus. The second quadrant is where sine is positive. So uh, the first part of the little slide there, I went in and corrected it here during the video, but um, it should say sine of negative 246 equals uh, 0.9135, all right? What's on the screen with the calculator piece is correct. All right, so moving forward here, all right, now we're gonna go the opposite way. Now we have the ratio, and we need to find the angle, all right? So sine, that 0.9677, that's the ratio of the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, all right? So we wanna go backwards now and find the angle. So this is where we use the inverse sine, sine functions, our second sine in our calculator, okay? Still making sure that we're in degree mode, we're gonna use sine inverse. So you're gonna hit, before you do anything, you're gonna hit second sine, then type in all of the characters there, so all the digits, 0.9677915, and hit enter. You should approximately get 75 degrees. So now we have to be able to handle secant, right? Secant goes with cosine. So we have secant of 1.054829. But we have to, in order to do cosine, we have to use the reciprocal piece here, okay? So in this case, we're gonna use this identity. Cosine of theta is one over secant theta. In order for us to plug this in here, we're gonna have to do cosine inverse of one divided by the ratio. So these are the harder ones to do is uh, secant, cosecant, and cotangent because we're not used to it 
on being able to go back and forth. So in this scenario, when we have the ratio, we have to do one over the ratio and take the inverse trig function of it. So in this case, it's cosine inverse of one divided by 1.054. So make sure you understand if we're finding the difference between where we gotta find secant inverse because we don't have the angle, we're looking for angle theta versus the earlier example where we had angle theta, right? And we had to do the trig identity that goes with it and then do the inverse here. So one way or another, when we are doing secant, cosecant or cotangent, you have to apply the inverse. It's just a matter of when you do it. Okay, the previous example, since we had the angle, we do the inverse piece at the end. This one, since we have the ratio, we have to do the inverse piece at the beginning, all right, and then take its, um, its associated trig function with the inverse trig function, okay? So, we want to be able to find all these different ones. So there's what it would look like in your calculator if you were to plug it in and make sure that you are, you know, pause the video, uh, make sure that you plug these in and that you're getting these values with your calculator. If not, email me or we can Zoom call or those sort of things and I can walk you through it or ask questions in class. Uh, we can double check and make sure that we're going, okay? So just make sure, all right, we have to do the inverse cosine. Same applies if we had cosecant and cotangent uh, and those. All right, so where is this applicable? All right, real life problem, physics problem. And this is why I wanted you to think about cosine and sine as a vertical component and a horizontal component. All right, so if we read through this problem here, it says when an automobile travels uphill or downhill on a highway, it experiences a force due to gravity, right? A G-force. Uh, same thing when you're on a roller coaster, any kind of those amusement park rides, that funny feeling you get, that's a gravitational force uh, that's impacting you, all right? So this force, F in pounds, is the grade resistance, and it's modeled by this equation. F equals W sine theta, all right? So theta is the grade, W is going to be the weight of the vehicle uh, as we do this, okay? So if we have the automobile moving uphill, all right, theta's got to be greater than zero. If it's moving downhill, theta is less than zero. We're dropping below the horizon when we do these sort of calculations. All right, so simple physics problem here. Um, forces are going to be in the vertical or horizontal component uh, direction of this when we do this. So keep this picture. Make sure uh, you pause this, have this in your notes have the picture with you for when we do the next couple slides here. We want to calculate the force to the nearest, all right, 10 pounds for a 2,500 pound car traveling an uphill grade of theta is 2.5 degrees. So in essence for this problem, on the left hand side, we would use a left hand diagram here, we would, that would be our triangle, right? Theta is 2.5 degrees, all right, and the car is 2,500 pounds. It's kind of like when you see those grade um, when you guys drive down to Chattanooga or something and we're going down through the mountains, you kind of see like, hey, it's a 2% grade or it's a 6% grade. That's what this really means, all right? So it's the force, you know, that these trucks, truckers, it's really important for them so that they have to slow down. They have a lot more weight, uh, so they'll do more damage and go a lot faster sort of thing. So we really just substitute in the equation here. We have uh, 2,500 for W and we got 2.5 for theta. So our force equals W sine theta, so we get 2,500 sine of 2.5. Make sure you put that in your calculator. So the force is 110 pounds, okay? Does that make sense how we plug those in? Okay. Now, we want to calculate the bottom one here. The force is uh, 10 pounds, 5,000 pounds, and now the truck's going downhill, all right? So theta, so we have a negative 6.1 grade. We're substituting that in. All right, so the force is negative 530 pounds. What's that really telling us? The force is what? Down, okay? That's what the negative means. It's not a negative force, it's just a direction. The force is going down versus going up in this scenario. All right, so we have to think about this, you know, as it's applied to real life. So that's the, gra that's the gravitational force that's impacting this. All right, so when we're going downhill, gravity's pushing us. Okay, when we're going uphill, we're fighting against gravity. So if, you know, you ride on a really curvy road or a really um, hilly road, all right, and you're going up and down and fast and turn around, you know, this is really kind of what's going on. You feel that gravitational force like in your stomach and things like that, all right? That's, but just remember that it's not a negative force. It's just the direction uh, because gravity is forcing it down in this scenario. All right, what happens now if theta is zero and theta is 90? Well, let's think about these, OK? 
okay? When theta is zero, what's the sine value have to be? It has to be zero, right? There's, there's no force, it's just the normal force of gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, all right? That's the normal force of gravity that we would have, all right? But sine of zero is what? Zero. If theta was 90 degrees, sine of 90 is one, right? So we're gonna have a, that's our like maximum gravitational force if we're trying to go up, we're fighting against that. So these are kind of forces when we're trying to like launch a rocket or bring an, a rocket down to earth, you know, and those sort of things and how they impact us. You know, the theta, the 90, the 270, the 360, all 180, those all make a big difference, okay? So if theta is zero, there's zero gravitational force pushing down on it, right? So your car, if there's zero grade and you're not driving it, it's just going to stay there in one position, all right? If, you know, your car is driving, it's whatever the weight of the car is times one. So if we're going straight uphill, we gotta overcome the weight of the vehicle. So we got over, if the car is 2,500 pounds and we're going straight up, okay, the force has to be 2,500 pounds of force to lift it up. That's literally you getting under the car and lifting it straight up, right? So, and then it's easier to push it downhill, right? Because the force would be in the opposite direction and gravity would be 80, okay? So how this plays out is if theta is zero, right? We're on flat ground, gravity doesn't help the vehicle roll. If we're at 90, Okay, the road's completely vertical. Think about like you're at uh, a water park, right? And it's the one where the ride drunk drops out from underneath you. You're going straight down. All gravitational forces are applying on you. But what helps you slow down, right? When you go down that ride or like that banana ride, right? Where you ride straight down and then you ride straight up. So think about the force on those. As you're going down, gravity's really pushing you and aiding you. But what happens then is as you start to go up the other side of the ride, what's fighting against you? Your weight. So your weight is sl slowing you down because you have to overcome your weight and override gravity. So that's how we can use your weight to accelerate and decelerate on a theme park ride when you're at a water park. All right, so hopefully after this, we understand how to uh, use our calculator to calculate um, either the angle or the ratio for sine, cosine, and tangent or, all right, being able to find it for secant, cosecant, and cotangent. All right, remember to ask some questions in class or shoot me an email if you have any questions. All right, but that's it for this section in chapter two.